Hi, it's Dr. Robin, aka Double O Pie. I still don't have many questions from my YouTube comments, so in this edition of Dr. Robin Answers Questions, I'm going to answer questions from my lab students. Several of the labs we're doing in class this quarter have a phrase in them that students clearly don't understand because I keep getting questions like this. What the heck does quantitative transfer mean? As it turns out, quantitative transfer is a really important set of techniques that get used a lot in analytical chemistry. In a nutshell, when you hear the term quantitative transfer, you should be trying to get every last bit of your analyte from one piece of glassware to another. Let's look at an example and use it to clarify what I mean. Let's say that I have instructions for making a standard which tell me to weigh out approximately 0.3 grams of Allura red dye. That's also known as red number 40 record the actual mass, and then quantitatively transfer it to a volumetric flask. Because we're creating this as a standard, we need to know the exact mass that we're adding to our solution. So here you can see I weighed out a bit over 0.3 grams, 0.3064 grams. That's about as close as I can get. After I add the solid to the volumetric flask, it's pretty clear that some of the dye that I weighed out is still on the weighing paper. The reason I use dye for this demonstration is that you can see the particles that are left behind. If I were weighing out a white solid on white weighing paper, you wouldn't see the residue, but it would still be there. The point of quantitative transfer in this case is to make sure that every single bit of the dye that I weighed ends up in my volumetric flask. I weighed out 0.3064 grams and I want all of it in the flask not 0.3063 grams, not 0.3062, but all of the 0.3064 grams. So what I'm going to do is rinse the residue on the filter paper into the volumetric flask with deionized water. What I've just showed you is just one technique that could be classified as quantitative transfer. Here are a couple more. In the previous example, we were transferring a solid to a volumetric flask, but sometimes you're doing a similar transfer with a liquid or solution. This sort of quantitative transfer works the same way. You'll first use a funnel to transfer as much of the solution into the volumetric flask as you can, then rinse down the beaker into the flask using a squirt bottle. The final sort of quantitative transfer I want to call out is one that you often find when doing a graphometric analysis, the transfer of a solution containing a precipitate to a filtration apparatus. To model this, I'm using a moderately insoluble metal salt in water. As you can see, after pouring the solution into the funnel, there's still a considerable amount of chunky stuff left behind. Trying to rinse the solids down using the squeeze bottle only helps to transfer really tiny particles. So what we're going to do is use a piece of labware called a rubber policeman to scrape the biggest chunks into the funnel. After that, you can use the squeeze bottle to get what's left. You may have to alternate the use of the rubber policeman with a squeeze bottle several times to transfer everything. Now
Now that you know what quantitative transfer is, you might have another question. How do I know when to use quantitative transfer techniques? The simple answer is, if changing the amount of your analyte will change your results, you should do a quantitative transfer. For example, in one of the labs I taught as a grad student, the students made two solutions, a solution of ferrous ammonium sulfate and a solution of 110 phenanthylene. The ferrous ammonium sulfate procedure calls for quantitative transfer, but the 110 phenanthylene solution does not. Why is this? Reading the background theory, we see that ferrous ammonium sulfate is a source of the iron 2 plus ion for this analysis, which reacts in a 3 to 1 ratio with 110 phenanthylene to form the red colored complex that we would be analyzing via UV vis. Doing some math, we see that we have 3.6 times 10 to the minus fourth moles of iron and 7.2 times 10 to the minus third moles of phenanthylene. We have 20 times as much phenanthylene as iron, and we only need three times as much. Another way to put this is that we have an excess of phenanthylene and iron is our limiting reagent. If we lost a little bit of phenanthylene, we'd maybe only have 19 times as much phenanthylene as we do iron, but all of the iron would still be able to react. But if we lost a bit of iron, we would end up making less of the iron phenanthylene complex overall, our solution would be a little less red, and our whole analysis would be off. This is why the instructions tell you to do a quantitative transfer of iron, but not phenanthylene. So there are a couple of questions that you might ask when you're trying to decide whether to do a quantitative transfer or not. The first is, is this the limiting reagent in the reaction? If it is, to a quantitative transfer. The second question is very much related to that. Is the chemical I am transferring my analyte the thing I am actually measuring? Or does it contain my analyte? Whether you're making a standard solution of known concentration or using an unknown sample, if the answer to this is yes, you should transfer it quantitatively. Now, another way to do quantitative transfers is to use volumetric pipettes. Um, so that's a different sort of quantitative transfer. If you're using volumetric glassware, you don't need to use the techniques that I showed above. So I hope that answered any questions you have about quantitative transfer. Is there another lab technique you'd like to have explained? Drop your requests and any other questions in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and I look forward to seeing you again soon.